All right, guys. So uh, Coop here is kind of going to go over some of these releases, and and we're just going to kind of go in depth on them about uh, whether it be target shooting or hunting. Um, I guess first of all, maybe kind of go over like like you are a professional archer, like you shoot with guys like Levi Morgan, Dan McCarthy. Um, you know, those are probably the two mm -hmm. biggest names. So yeah. um, Coop knows the stuff more or less. Um, so uh, what do you shoot exactly? Like from a guy that doesn't know anything about target archery. Explain like when you get to a tournament, uh, what do you what do you do? Well, I go to mostly 3D tournaments, you know, and unknown where you have to judge the distance, uh, you know, out to 50 yards. So I mean, we shoot a lot of different animals, you know, a lot of 3D animals. Um, there's all kinds of wild stuff we shoot on the ASA, and then the IBO is totally different, you know. There's different facets facets of archery. Um, there's a lot of different stuff you can go to, you know, indoor spot tournaments. Um, I might shoot one of those maybe here coming up, but uh, mainly 3D. And uh, I'm not a professional archer. I just try to shoot professionally. Right. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Hmm. So, like, more or less, you go to a, a 3D course where you have yeah. no idea how yeah, far the targets are. You know they're yeah. within a certain distance. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you really have no idea. The layout's there. Um, you know, and you can't go there to your scoring round starts on the first day. Right. You know, when you get there, you can shoot the practice range or shoot the bags. Um, do that kind of stuff. Make sure your equipment's on, see some targets. Yeah. Um, and, and those kind of things. And so, like, what's the size of, of what you're trying to hit? Quarter uh, dime? I mean, I'd say a 12. You're trying to shoot, you're trying to hit the 12. It's probably... Well, maybe a half dollar, yeah. a little smaller than a half dollar. It might, it might be relative, relative to a quarter or a little so bigger. So you're off two yards in your estimation. Oh, two yards, you're way off. Right. Yeah. So, you, yeah. so, the, so the game is, everybody can shoot a bow well. It's, it's, it's yeah. Yeah. Well, it's you got to be able to shoot a bow well when you don't know, like you think you know the distance. Right. But you're really just making an educated guess. Yeah. And so... Just, be so confident. It, it, you got to be confident in your number and confident in your shot because yeah. if you've got the number make a bad shot you're not going to hit it either right but it, it's definitely there's a lot to it you know a lot of strategy and stuff like that it goes involved it's not just drawing your bow back and shooting it yeah know? so yeah man i don't know a lot about that stuff i've always been interested in it i know you said you were going to get yeah. into it so. um so yeah guys <clears throat> i shoot this uh this release the it's versa. The, the versa yeah and i shoot it for hunting what do you, which one do you use for hunting? I, I shoot the Ranger uh, for hunting. And that's a back tension. That's a back tension, yep, a so, hinge style. So like, I just, I, I mean, I would shoot any of these, but the only reason I like this is because it's on the, um, it's on the on the, the flex connector system. Right. And uh, you know, it hangs on your wrist. You can kind of tuck it yeah, underneath and, there. And for hunting, that's all really the only reason, just so yeah. you're, it's, it's here just on so your Just so it's on your, yeah, yeah, just so it's on you the whole time. Yeah, so like on, on this, with this for hunting, um, what I do, um, is I actually clip this on my yeah leave loop it on there and just leave it on there where whereas like a back tension you can't really do that so yeah. that's why it'd be it'd be nice to have that um, so for a hinge for hunting purposes what would be like like the the disadvantages and advantages of it because I I, I, went, I went down that rabbit hole one year trying to use one hunting and I ended up chickening it out more or less I mean the disadvantages is you know if you got a fast moving shot you're not going to be able to just slam right. the trigger right you're going to have to work the shot um but the advantages is you know you're you're focusing on aim when you're not as soon as your pin gets there letting it eat mm -hmm. like you know shooting punching it or hitting it with a wrist rocket whichever the case may be you know you really got to pick a spot and what i like the most about it is it makes me slow down i doesn't i don't get in that oh my gosh there's a big buck i gotta you know shoot real quick yeah. i just get in that okay i gotta hook it on i have a step you know right i, I make sure i hook it on Draw back, click, I get my anchor, and I go through the process right. until I fire the shot. But basically, you're just constantly thinking about aiming. And those, it's slow, it keeps my heart rate lower because I can't just draw it back and just shoot it, you know, like, yeah. like a trigger. Um, and I've, I've shot wrist straps, and I've hunted with a thumb button before. And, and I've killed deer with both, a lot of deer. Um, I've killed more deer with a wrist strap than I have anything. Yeah. I just... I wounded the last big buck I wounded and uh I mean I made an okay shot but I rushed it a little bit yeah and if I would have had the hinge I would have slowed down and then the first buck I killed with my hinge is actually my biggest bow buck right and, uh, right and, and, and the shot felt good when it went off it's the pin set good and I ate it was 38 yards boom I mean smoked him right more and, and a lot of times like 
if you can't shoot him with the hands, you probably shouldn't be shooting him at all anyway. So there's a lot of times. I mean, right. I, 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 it's definitely cost me a deer or two as yeah. well. Yeah. You know, I mean, I feel like, because you could have made a quicker shot. You right. know, I shoot a slow shot anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And that's that's why I was going to go to it. It was just, just being more patient with my shot. Um, it makes you make a good shot. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, but it's not really something like a lot of guys, you can't just go and, and buy one of these suckers and, and expect to go hunting the next day. You're going to have to practice. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts about people, you know, in the summertime using a hinge style release and then maybe during hunting season using it? I think that's a great idea. And, yeah. and like if, if they was to use like say the, the Versa, you know, you can always get the infinity to match, mm -hmm. you know, it's got the same uh, third finger here. So they're, they're going to feel the same, you know, you, you may not hit the exact same, but they're going to feel the same in the hand for the most part. I mean, they might feel a touch different. Um, but I really like that idea. I mean, if I was, a, if, if, I, like I would, I would hunt with that thumb button, no problem. Wouldn't bother mm -hmm. me in the slightest. Um, but I just, I'm so used to that back tension yeah. now. And it's, I shoot it all year long for tournaments and stuff. And, now, like if a guy was going to do that, let's say he, he hunts with the wrist rocket and he yeah, shoots, shoots a, a back tension for practice. As far as your bow setup, is there much you're going to have to change going yeah. from one uh, to the uh, other? Yeah, you're going to have to change your peep height. You know, you're going to have to move it up and down. Uh, maybe have to lengthen your D loop a little bit, shorten it. I mean, but your peep height's definitely going to have to change a bunch. Right. If you go because your wrist, anchor. Because your anchor, yeah. I mean, I don't, for me, a wrist strap, I have to have a really high peep. Yeah. Um, for some reason, I don't know why. But yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that, that'd be not the only thing to change. Your point of impact will change a little bit, but it's not terrible. But I would definitely practice with it. They are the greatest tools to practice with. Yeah. I mean, because it makes you aim. It makes you stay in the shot in the back, you know, not just kind of draw back and, you know, let it fly. Right, right. Yeah, and like I, like I was saying, like I, a lot of buddies that use these Richard Rockets, I, oh, yeah, I, watch them, yeah. I watch them use it, and it's just like, it always makes me cringe at how hard they're punching the trigger with it. And I mean, I'm not by any means a perfect yeah. shot, but I went to this this year and it really helped my, uh, yeah, my my trigger, trigger panic well, or whatever you want to call it. Most guys will we'll see in the video here, you know, they, they have, they're too far out. You really, you really want to be right here, you know. Yeah. You want to be just kind of curled up. That's and just, right. And if you, if you do want to get on it, you know, you don't have to go as far. You know, if it's out here, you got to kind of reach and you got to... You know yeah and that's like i'll just do it on video here this is my wife's release actually and uh she shot a number of of different uh releases um at our local archery shop um and this b3 one she she like hands down the, the best and it's real simple you just back this screw out um a little bit and you can see we, we adjusted this way up uh, for two uh, just for demonstration purposes but simply pull it up and she has it you can see where the old holes are in, in the strap but she has it all the way up here um so it's that simple to adjust it and, um you know this is a super clean system that b3 has a lot of other manufacturers have a, something simpler similar i've had some wrist straps in the past that have the the shaft on it and you take off the bolt and get it adjust mm. and it's real big pain in the butt this is really micro adjustable yeah uh, absolutely. You know what i mean yeah. that's why we, we she liked it a lot yeah um so yeah, I, I don't shoot a wrist strap anymore, but that's the one I would definitely shoot her um, with that. Uh, what's, the, what's the system called that's on here? That's the flex connector. Flex connector. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, it's got a cone tip screw that goes down and keeps that from moving. I mean, you can't, you cannot move it at all. Even, I mean, you'll still want to tie a knot back here, but yeah, it, yeah, you for cannot sure. get it to move. It's pretty, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty slick system and it comes on the, on the, on the back tension as well. Same thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, same exact thing. Okay, so I want to talk about this this spring thing because yep. um, I probably shot this exact release you have right here uh, last summer. Yeah, you me. shot that when you yeah. came over. Yeah, and um, I'd never seen one of these spring uh, triggers before, and it's like I mean, it's just so smooth. Yeah, you, you can, can just bend it. Yeah, um, here's my my Versa. Uh, mine's just the aluminum body, I yep. believe it is. Mm -hmm. This yep. is brass. Yep, brass. Yep. And there's a quite a big difference in, in the weight. weight. Yeah. So what's the it just prefers, you know, you get different feedback from an aluminum style and you go to the brass, you know, the shot feels, you know, where it tells your brain, oh, you know, your hand might come back a little farther with the brass. You can maybe it, just because the weight and you feel like you're pulling more. Then again, some guys like the aluminum better because it, you know, just they get a better feedback. It tells yeah. them something different, you know, in their shot process. But the spring for me has been an awesome th game changer for the button. I've actually, I've, 
I shot a button last year and I shot one this year a little bit at the first tournament and I have never I haven't shot a thumb button in years years and years and years at a tournament until I shot a shoot in the spring uh, just because it'll I like the movement a little bit I like yeah. the bend of the spring it's just a different it's different from yeah, that. I, I feel like it's a whole another setup when some people wouldn't some, like it they want to you know they right, like that hard some, post something yeah. Firm, yeah so I think it's something definitely to try out though if you're gonna go with oh the, yeah um, a button or yeah uh, uh, you know three Absolutely. finger two finger something like that something else I do too is like um, these are so adjustable too. I, I showed you as a two finger. I have the I have the third yeah. finger on here right now, but you, you can, can actually just it. flip that off and you can adjust it, um, you know, to different. However you want. Yeah, it. however you want it. You can make it a two. And it comes at a pro pack too. It'll come with the with the hook and it'll be black anodized, mm -hmm. and it'll or it'll come in a four finger now. So you can you can really make it whatever you want. Two finger, three finger, four finger. Yeah. Any any of them. So yeah. like as far as tension on as far as how hard you have to to. You know set the trigger off what do you what would you recommend guys doing to like i mean like i would just get back and just kind of play with it you know just see if you want to be out here you know that that's pretty good there if you want to be yeah. out on the end or if you want to be in here in the middle you know it's going to change that that's the good thing about the spring you know if you really want to get back and kind of bend it and just kind of pull and work on your shot and not where it was going to fire you know you can get way out there on the end and you see it fired there or if you want it to go quick you know, you're not having any anticipation issues, and you're just squeeze, 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 and you, yeah. you know, get on the inside. So you can you can kind of change your tension level a little bit depending on where your thumb is. But you know, and it's it's really whatever that person wants. You know, some guys really like that hard post. You know, some yeah. guys like to have that to pull against, kind of keeps them keeps their back locked in in the same. You know, so yeah. And I guess if like you're on a budget or something, obviously. Most times the, the wrist racks yeah. are going to be a little bit, mm -hmm. little bit more. They're going to be a little more price point. Right, right. Whereas some of these are more, a little more intricate, and uh, there's a little more well, to them. There's a new V3 thumb button out, and now it's called the Exit. Okay. And it's a little different. It doesn't have as many options as this, but it's more price point effect, more price point uh, effective yeah. there, you know. Um, and it it's pretty sweet, and it's it's got some awesome internals. There's no trigger travel. I mean, you could pull on it, and I mean, I think I think they retail for like one twenty nine. I mean, okay. they're a pretty good release yeah. there, yeah. But I don't have one. But they're called the, the they are called the Exit. Yeah, that'd be and definitely a one. Check they're a hot sure. item, yeah, for sure. Yeah, a lot of a lot of guys are a lot of people are wanting them. You know, they're a pretty big hit with that yeah. show. Yeah, yeah, I, I love all of them. I've shot I've shot some of their back tension now. I don't shoot a back tension very very much, but. Uh, um, man, I can't say enough good things about the B three. Well, you know, a lot things. of a lot of guys like. I don't know what you, like what's your opinion. What do you think the two biggest things that a hunter slacks on during hunting season, or not even during hunting season? We'll just say leading up to hunting season. For, I can think two of them that people I know slack for archery. Just deer hunting. It. Yeah, or we'll just say archery hunting. Yeah, bow hunting. Like shooting your bow in particular, or for hunting in general. Just shooting. Like get ready for archery hunting. Uh, one is probably. Uh, I don't think hunters tune their bows enough. Yep, I, I agree and then, with that. I mean, if you're going to go with, you know, but a lot of people and, don't shoot past 20 yards either. No, that's that's yards. true. So you don't really need a. I mean, it, it needs to be tuned. But I mean, yeah. to me, I want it absolutely perfect. But that's just oh yeah, I'm me very too. I, I'm I'm uh, I put a lot of time and effort into hunting, and I'd hate for something stupid to happen. And well, that, and, and that's what I mean. Like, I yeah. think a lot of other people do. You know, they go shed hunting. They're out there quite a bit. Yeah. Throughout the season, because we all love to be out there. Yeah. You know. And I think the two biggest things that they that they slack on is practicing the right way. Yeah. And and I think scouting. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of guys don't put in. I mean, you know, you're scouting a lot. Um, yeah. A lot of guys don't put in enough scouting, but I think a lot of it, bow hunters, they just kind of slap it together and go. And yeah, when I was sure. growing up, 3D archery was huge. I mean, that's right. you know that's what everybody did. But I, I think it's coming back a little bit. But I think guys need to. You know, most people need to practice. Yeah, and guys like. You know, they the week before season they go and they throw a field point on. Mm -hmm. They shoot ten arrows and it's good enough. You and know. Now in Indiana, you got crossbow season. You know, yeah. Crossbow season. Yeah, yeah, that's a whole nother podcast. Yeah, worms. But, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. And and I, and I, I mean, I was I shot my bow a lot uh, back in the day. I didn't know anything about tuning now, and I'm still learning so much about tuning. I bug you all the time yeah, about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I think. I think guys just do a little bit of research on it and you can learn a lot. I yeah, mean, there's nothing's there's, real difficult about there's it. There's a lot out there now, you oh, know, yeah. with the social media and I mean so many people are putting stuff out there on different platforms, but 
I think the biggest thing is practicing the right way. You know, practicing yeah. just making a good shot and just kind of just really making a good shot because you and that big deer stand there, you got to tell yourself, I'm going to make a good shot. You yeah. can't get overworked up. But. No, and even, yeah, even if as much as you... And you, archery's you, fun. Oh, yeah, it's a blast. Yeah. It's a blast. Um, yeah, for sure. Well, uh, so. anything else you want to talk about on as far as the, the B3 releases, or do you think we covered it all pretty well? I think we pretty well covered it all. You yeah. know, I mean, we got the new site, the new exact site. Oh, yeah. You show show that we'll real quick. That a little bit. All right, so this is the B3 target uh, site. It's the it's the exact sight line. It's got a lot of different options. It's got the metal sight tapes, as you can see there from B3. Uh, you can order the custom one of those. It's got first axis, second axis, and then your third axis is right here, you know, where you can move that in, in and out. Uh, this is the exact scope. This is the vented scope. Um, I really like it a lot. See, I got a four power lens in. You can you can put sun shades on it. You can do whatever you want to with it. This is, I like it just plain Jane. I've got a 10,000 uh, pin in it. I really love their pins. Like these are the, these are some of the best pins out there. It's one of my favorite features. But another thing about this size is you can move this pin. You can go, you can go how I got there. You can come down from the top you got all different directions you can move it to anywhere on there so just kind of wherever you want it you know personally and that's the uh, exact target site made in America right here in the USA yeah that that site like when I when Cooper I was bow, bowing here and I I, uh, I started fiddling with it and I I can't believe how solid it is I mean it just feels like a you know big yeah I mean, it's built it, like a tank oh it. man so they make this same style of version here it's called uh they make it in the uh, comp hunter yeah and it'll come with you know the the the, the, the vertical travel and, and the first second and third axis and then instead of having the scope housing it'll have the pin housing you know which you'll be able to run it up and down uh it's pretty sweet uh and then they got another price point it's called the exact hunter you know it's a little bit smaller it's just a just a multi-pin site it doesn't have the adjustment on it um I, I personally like all, I mean, I like all of them, but I like to run the comp hunter because I like to have the adjustment to go up and down. Yeah. I shoot a four pin, 20 to 50, and you know, out west or something, you shoot 60 or 70 right. yards, you want to have that adjustability to go up and down quick, and you want the rapid travel, you know. Yeah. The, the comp hunter will not have the clicks, as you can, I don't know if you can hear that on the audio, but this one's got really fine clicks. The yeah. other one, it's got the rapid travel, it just goes straight down. Right, right. Which okay. for for hunting purposes, that's probably yeah. You don't want the clicks for hunting. You want right, it to go. No. You want it to move as fast as you can. Right, for sure, for sure. Yeah, that's something I need to invest in this year. A little better, better side. I think. Sight. I think guys. That's a huge. Oh that's yeah. That's a huge. A lot of guys overlook that. Yeah, for sure. Because I mean, you can get. There's a lot out there. You but, know, but you spend a thousand dollars on a bow, and then you buy a forty dollar sight for yeah. it, and, and it's just. Um, Man, there's so much that can go wrong with some of the plastic and, and composite oh, yeah, sites. Is, um, one little bump or something, and you, especially if you're out west on a hunt mm -hmm. you spend a bunch of money on and yep. and uh, you sure. break something. Um, and then, can we talk about these bars? Yeah, Bean Stinger. Yeah. These so, are the Bean Stinger Micro Hex countervail. They're, uh, they're a little smaller diameter, a little stiffer rod. Yeah. Allows you to put a little more weight on the end. Um, like I said, they're, 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 these are awesome bars. And they are super stiff. And, and I shoot Beast Stinger for hunting. You know, I shoot the uh, uh, Beast Stinger Hunter set, uh, set up. And I shoot the same bracket, same style. I shoot a 10 inch on the back and 12 inch on the front. And uh, a lot of guys overlook that as well. You know, you got, when it, they just you shoot a front rod, which is that's not a lot. You really don't need a lot out front. You don't even need to stay blocker, but the guys want to shoot further distances you know that that level is a big deal of keeping your pin yeah. steady you know like getting that bow level um you can shoot a smaller rod in the front and it doesn't matter but it's all about holding the pin steady and you know that's why like all your competition guys you'll all see them shooting a setup really similar to this or they may run two bars out the back right they may run yeah. a v bar system or something like that um but you know yeah and and and, and then in the bow is a martin annex 38 um it's a great shooting bow. I really like it a lot. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a slick looking bow. I love the hunting bow. The at the Attic Six. It's yeah. awesome. 
That's yeah, we'll have to talk about that when you get it. Yeah, for sure. yeah we'll, we'll do a, maybe we can do a build on that. Yeah, we'll that'd be fun. build it up and do a podcast yeah. on it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, this is something I've always just been puzzled with, with, with 3D and you guys, you guys that, that shoot, you know, shoot these. Um, why do you guys shoot the, you know, the lizard tails lizard or stuff? Tail. Like, not, not like a drop away, like, you know how you get in the hunting industry, everybody a shoots A lot it. of guys shoot a drop away. I okay. Mean, it's just really preference. I've always shot a lizard tongue. That's a AAE freak show there. Yeah. And, um... I, I just it's just the simplicity of it. Okay. It's so easy to not micro wrong adjust. With it. Not a lot. I mean, you know, you replace the blade or stuff like that. You know, and most of the dropaways now, there's not a lot that goes wrong with them. But I just like a blade. I I feel like it's maybe a little more accurate. But oh really? You got you got to kind of shoot a little bit knock high so it clears it. But um. Oh okay. Some guys would disagree with me, and they would say the drop away is more accurate. I just, I think it's probably depending on the bow and the shot. And yeah. There's a lot there that can, you know, change. Yeah, and probably some you've used for years and years. And yeah, it's just not my views forever, and I've always, I, for 3D and, I mean, for hunting, I, I use the, uh, the DOA. Yeah, <clears> the, the AE DOA. DOA yeah, yeah, I've heard good, good things uh, about that. Uh, it's, it's been the best uh, hunting rest, yeah, I've used in a while. Yeah. I use several of them. I mean, I, there there's all kinds of good ones out there. Oh yeah, you know, so yeah. It's whatever you want to buy, but yeah, I just always use the laser tone. Hmm. All right, man. Is there anything else you want to go over with Bo or your setup or anything like that? I don't think so. All right. Well, I think that's it. Thanks for uh, getting on and talking about all this stuff yeah. with us. No time. No problem. Uh, Anytime. All right. Yeah. All right, guys. Again. Cool. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like our videos. We'll see you guys later.